Welcome to Coffee with the Counselors. I'm Andrea Lawless from Flat Rock Elementary. I'm Tanya Barber from Star Elementary. And I'm Robin Richardson from Ava Elementary. Thank you for joining us today. We are going to talk about confidence and self-esteem. But we have to talk about our coffee cups first. Yes, we do. Okay. It's a tradition. Um, my coffee cup today is understated but sophisticated, just like my friend who gave it to me. Shout out to Pastor Scott Taylor with uh, Turning Point Church of Greenville. He is a friend that gave me some positive feedback about our podcast and sent me this coffee cup. So thank you, Pastor Scott. That is so nice. (laughs) Well, I have a to-go coffee cup today, and we, we all got one from the district, but I had a student give me this one has my name on it, Miss Barber. The influence of a good counselor can never be erased. Thank you, Drayson Rouse. But I don't have coffee today. I'll have Holly's Kiss in here, which is some Aww. cookies and cream milk from the local farm here. Um, Milky Way Farms. Thank you, Carson and Keegan, for my milk today. Oh, that's sweet. And I have my Disney book in honor of, I just got back from Disney. I didn't get this from Disney. Well, it did come from Disney, but it says once a princess, always a princess and has Cinderella on Sweet. it. She's one of my favorite princesses and shout out to the Fortner family. This was a birthday gift and it's one of my go-to mugs when I'm at home. That's With so sweet. Gross, plain black coffee. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> no creamer today, Robin. No creamer for me. All right. Well, thank you um, for sharing. And so today we are (laughs) talking about, (laughs) I'm sorry, guys, I didn't know how to smoothly segue from black coffee to confidence, but (laughs) you confidently segued. You did a great job, (laughs) Andrea. Good job. So today we're talking about um, building confidence and self-esteem in your students. And we're going to talk a little bit about setting a culture for confidence and helping them work through struggles and failures. And then, of course, things we can do each and every day to help build confidence. And so um, I think it's important when you are building confidence to encourage your students to try new things. Oh, absolutely. Like our teachers have to get our kids to do new things every day in the classroom. But I think sometimes when we have our own kids try new things, we try to not let them fail. And that is probably one of the most important parts of doing new things because they learn from mistakes and failures. That's true. Mm -hmm. Y'all, I'm sorry. I'm having a hot flash. No problem. (laughs) (laughs) We're out of control today, y'all. Oh, goodness. I I agree with you. Our kids do have to try new things every day, and it's very easy for them to get frustrated and to want to give up, but we have to let them struggle. We have to even let them fail once or twice in order to be able to see that they can recover and that they can do hard things. And then I think, too, like as a mom, one of my my biggest um, struggles is to sit back and let them do it, Mm -hmm. you know, like, Mm -hmm. because if I see that they're about to fail or it's not about to go right, like I want to type a personality, want to take over and just be like, no, just, just, just here, let me, let me do it. Let me do it. Let me show you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And just letting them like experience it all the way through, like from, from start to finish. Mm -hmm. I think when we talk about setting a culture of confidence, so us as parents, we have to do a few things on our end too, to help our kiddos. And, one of those things I think is avoiding comparing kid Absolutely. A with kid B or, you know, you're not doing it like Susie Q did it. And so, and that's hard. It's um, really hard. We are very quick to compare our kids to others, um, even in the classroom sometimes, or when you have, you've had the older sibling and now you have the younger sibling, it's easy to compare. But I think as parents trying to avoid that comparison um, so that they can learn it on their own and if they don't measure up, then you're not giving them that comparison to meet up to. So then they don't feel like, oh, I've got to do this because my brother did this. But that's a hard one to not do. You know? See, I'm fortunate because my kids are so far apart mm-hmm. that by the time, you know, Holden got up to be able to do the things that, you know, the age that Asher was, mm-hmm. like he was nowhere near interested in the same stuff. So 
it, it wasn't. But like your kids are so close. How do you ha- mm-hmm. and you have two girls? It's, you know, right. So how do you handle um, competition? Is our daily life, and so I try to remind them that they do have different personalities and that they have different strengths and different things they're interested in and try to help them steer towards their own interest and not just copy the other one. Um, Sometimes, you know, we have to set goals and break goals into smaller steps because one of my daughters might catch on to something really quickly while the other one takes more time. So we have to take baby steps in order to feel confident and accomplished um that, that's what we do and and we still we still struggle I mean kids even when I try not to compare them they compare themselves mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I just try to give them compliments in those situations you know I think it's important to teach our kids how to speak positively about themselves and others mm-hmm. and that way they can feel better about themselves I think another thing with setting culture with self-confidence too is just being like a good model. And that's, yes. that's a struggle too. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, we're not always self-confident ourselves. Right. But even like, for example, like being on a diet. I feel like I'm on a perpetual, you know, mm-hmm. like trying to get healthy or eat Me right or, 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 you know, mentally, physically, mm-hmm. emotionally, all that good stuff. But I do catch myself because my youngest – He's like so empathetic and he's like, well, you're, you know, you're fine just the way you are. You know, and so I don't want to put those negative self images on, on him or for, and and maybe not so much with a boy as Mm -hmm. as girls do, Mm -hmm. but still because he is so like caring and, you know, worries about my feelings and everybody else's. I have to like really watch myself that mm-hmm. that I'm positive about myself too, so that they can I can emulate like what self confidence looks like from a grown up's point of view. Sure, right. and I think we always you know talk about mistakes and things, and even us adults still make mistakes too. And so I think when we have a mistake, and we can hopefully share it with our our children and say, look, you know, I made a mistake and. This is what I did through that so that they can learn that modeling as well. Um, And when we accomplish things, sharing that with our kids and them seeing how good we feel when we accomplish things, um, I think that's important too. Well, you know, you mentioned that as parents, it's good for us to share our stories of when we make a mistake or when we fail so what what are some ways that we can support our kids through those struggles and failures um, other than giving them that positive self-talk? And, um, you know, I think we can give kids books to read that will help mm-hmm. them understand that problems and failures and struggles do not mean that you quit or that you can't do it it just means that you might have to try another way Mm -hmm. I mean we could there's some really good books called what do you do with a problem and the most magnificent thing Mm -hmm. and a lot of libraries have those and those really help kids understand that mistakes are just part of life and for the older kids too not like I'm just thinking of like the upper elementary kids and even middle school and high school is pointing out role models because sometimes it's not cool to, in the words of my fifth graders here, I'm cringy, right? (laughs) So (laughs) I'm sure they definitely think their parents are probably pretty cringy. cringy That's that's the new word, right? (laughs) Yes. Um, But pointing out positive role models that, that emulates like, and I keep using that word, but that, that models like that self-confidence mm-hmm. too, that would be a, a good person to kind of, mm-hmm. you know, whether it be an athlete. I mean, there's a lot. There you, are a yeah. lot. And yeah. there are a lot that are not positive role models, right. but there are tons out there for them to, you know, research and um, review and look at some of the things that they've done positively through their communities that they grew up in and, and having that role model or even people that are local, you know, we have lots of people in our community that have accomplished a lot of things and they would be good role models to our students as well. And I, so I agree. I think having a role model to look at too, I know you probably both do this as well, but 
with our students, we talk about the power of yet oh, and yeah, how they I haven't see. accomplished something yet, or I'm not good at fractions yet. Well, I can still say that at almost 49. <laughs> I'm still not good at fractions yet, but Same. one day I'm going to get it. Um, but I think having instilling that big word, even though it's so small, yet, it's okay. You haven't gotten it yet. Keep working through it and you can get to it. So that's something that we share with our students here, but you know, maybe passing that along to our parents when we do those mindset growth mindful lessons that we pass those those things along to our parents. And you know, because we are trying to support them through the struggling process, when you're talking about things you can't do yet, you could also have them reflect back what are the things that I have mastered? You know, mm-hmm. once upon mm-hmm. a time you couldn't walk but now Now you can can. or once upon a time you couldn't ride a bike but now you can and helping them see all the things they've accomplished can give them that self-esteem boost they need to keep trying and to pointing out that your failures don't define you Mm -hmm. that like you know like if if I just gave up or if I just quit or if I let that be the end the first time I failed at something Mm -hmm. then where would I be you know and And there are There are a lot of people, I mean, you think about Michael Jordan, you think about Walt Disney, there are lots and lots of people that you can just give them examples of Mm -hmm. that, you know, yes, they failed a lot, you know, then, and then even Dr. Seuss, you know, there were lots of people that didn't want that author to write books and look at what impact they made. And then thinking about like different inventions that were Mm -hmm. created, Mm -hmm. like how many times that it really took for it to be medicines, like going through like different FDA trials. I mean, all kind of different examples of like, hey, if they would have quit the first time, then we may not have had this. Like I'm Mm -hmm. sure Apple didn't get their um, smartphone on the first try, you know, like just going through those examples of imagine where we would be if everyone that didn't succeed the first time that they tried something right d- just gave up and and when we do that i think it shows kids that hey wait a minute i might can do this and and you were talking about you know at one point in time you 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 couldn't walk and you learned well that goes with homework that goes with classwork that yes. even goes with activities outside of school like learning to swim or a gymnast that's trying to learn that hard double back flip or whatever. So I think supporting our kids and working through those struggles and failures in any situation that they're in is very important in helping set that culture. And don't forget to praise the effort too. Oh, absolutely. When they're making the mistakes or when they're succeeding, you know, it really builds confidence to to praise the effort because they may not be getting it right, but we can praise that they are persevering or that they are trying new ways. And even like taking that, the praising the effort part. So this week in um, third grade, I I met with them this week for like whole group guidance. And our topic was like just kind of revisiting the sizes of our problems because a lot of times, you know, kiddos, have a little bitty problem, but it's Mm -hmm. the end of the world, you know? So we talked about like which problems we could solve and yada, yada, yada. Well, there was a situation that happened and one of the kiddos used what they had learned in, in our class together, Mm -hmm. you know, put it into practice or whatever. So I went and praised the child during their class. Like, I'm so proud of you for like really considering the consequences of your actions instead of like trying to handle a situation on your own because it was a problem you needed help, you know? That's a great idea. That I'm so proud of you. And there, the, her classmates were like, good job. I mean, you know, and it just made, and they're like, oh, we're going to, we're going to make sure we do that next time. Mm -hmm. You know, like they, I mean, they didn't say that. Making that that connection. Yes. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, you sit on their faces and one of the little kids was like, Jesus, come get me now. Like I can go because like this child has, you know, (laughs) put it into practice. (laughs) But even, you know, the effort, you know, and she might not. I hope she makes the same decision next time, and I hope they all do. But, I mean, they may not. They may get caught up in it. But even, you know, celebrating when they do and, and you know, and pointing it out to other people, too. Or, like, mm-hmm. I'm so proud of my child because they blah, 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 mm-hmm. you know, bragging on, on them there, too. Well, that brings out, like, the outcome. And I think back to when my kids, my personal kids, played sports. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we look at the wins and losses, and that's such a big, big focus. And I – 
I'm probably just as competitive as anybody else. You know, I, <laughs> it's in the blood. And so it's hard not to look at a win and a loss. Sure. But there are times I think back to conversations and I sit and think, well, did I praise his or her effort regardless of the outcome of the game or the event? I can remember playing softball for Crescent and begging my mama, please let me ride with you. Because there were times that, even though we won, I might have gone three for four, but my dad loved him to death, but why didn't I get that other four, four, hit? Yeah. Why wasn't I four for four? My effort was there, obviously. And so I think back to conversations with both Ty and Allie when they were younger, and I hope that I did praise effort and not focus on the outcome because – when our students and our kids play team sports, it's hard. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, Carson and Keegan, they have a tournament today, the ones that gave me the milk this morning. And I was like, well, I hope y'all do great. And they're like, well, we're nervous. You know, they're anxious about these tournaments. And all these kids are playing in all these big tournaments and these big events now where we used to play just in rec ball. And so I hope that that parents really start focusing on effort because that builds that self-esteem and that confidence. Oh, it's okay that we didn't win. Mom saw how hard I tried and, or how hard I pitched or how hard I ran the bases. Effort is so huge. And when even with teachers, mm-hmm. they may not have made that perfect score or, you know, an A, but if that child's giving effort, most teachers are going to praise that. Mm-hmm. And so that effort builds that self-esteem. So, so we kind of looked at setting the culture. So mm-hmm. we talked about, um, oh, trying new things and positive role models and showing them, you know, definitely what it looks like to mm-hmm. build to have confidence in yourself and then modeling that to them and then comparison and contrast, right? And then we yes. talked about, like, okay, so what happens when they fail and they struggle? But what are things that they can do on, like, a day-to-day? Mm-hmm. What are some things that parents can do? What are some things that we can do um, to help kids with their self-confidence and their self-esteem daily? You know, I when I was kind of prepping for this, one thing that stood out for me, because I even drew a heart beside it, <laughs> um, I know, sweetness, um, is – you know, a lot of times kids get in the car and we say, hey, baby girl, how was your day? Or Bubba, what's going on? How was your day? But if you change that question just a little bit to what's something you did you're proud of today? Oh, I like that. I love that. You know, because a lot of times when we ask our kids, how was your day? It was good. Mm-hmm. They don't feel inclined to share any more than it was good or it was bad. And we have to probe them. But I think if we change that mindset question just a little bit and they start thinking about, oh, they want to know, okay, wait, what did I do that I'm proud of today? Yeah. So then they really start thinking about, okay, what did I do today? Did I follow the rules today? Did I turn on my homework in today? Did I help a friend today? What's something I can share with mom and dad that I am proud of? And I just, I love that. And stop asking what color were you on <laughs> Oh, yes, please stop asking what color did you get on today? Because, like, I'm putting kids How in the car and they're like, I'm on, I'm on purple. And I'm like, I don't even know if purple's yeah, good, good because yeah. it's so different. <laughs> yeah. Or I got two negatives today. Yes. You know, I mean, I think Instead, it, yes. ask what did you do that you're proud of today? I just love that. I'm, I'm glad that. you brought that I up. I do too, because I say to Holden every day, I ask him, like, hey, what was the best part of your day? Yes. Mm-hmm. But I like that even better. I'm because it that. instills that word of pride yes. and yes. and self-confidence. And I, I kind of connect those two. Like, I, I love when people are proud of things, whether it's something a family member does or whether it's where they grew up. I am proud to be a Crescent Tiger. Mm -hmm. I always will be. And that's one thing that I don't like is when people aren't proud of where they come from because that's, that's who made you. That's how you are today. And so I love that word proud. And I think it's important that our kids start using that word more. Um, So I love that aspect of this lesson. And then, too, you could kind of, with the feedback that you give them, or based off of what they say, too, is is talk about things that you're, like, I'm proud of you for, and it not always being 
Like, it doesn't always have to be school-related. I right. mean, it's like, I'm proud of you for, like, helping take out the trash today. Or yes. I'm really proud of you for stepping in and helping your sister or your brother. Mm-hmm. or your, Even if it's a chore they're supposed to do, yeah. making sure they know you're proud that they did do it. Yeah. And you or did I'm proud it of you the, for doing that, and I didn't have to ask yes. you five times and lose my mind in the process. Right, so, right. You know, for um, Valentine's one year, I had seen this idea somewhere where um, every day leading up to Valentine's, we would put a heart on our daughter's door. So they would see it when they woke up in the morning Mm -hmm. and it would have a Bible verse or something that we're proud of them for or a strength that they have. And they just loved that. And I was thinking that would be perfect for trying to build self-esteem and confidence and it doesn't have to be a hard. I mean, yes. you could do seasonal things. Mm-hmm. You could use a dry erase marker and write it on the bathroom mirror mm-hmm. so that they see it every day when they're well, brushing their teeth. Those. Yeah. Anything. Just I an easy that. way to remind them that they're special and that mm-hmm. you're thinking about them and that they're good at And things. I don't know about you, but when someone gives me a compliment or oh, praises girl. me, mm-hmm. it does make my self-confidence like... Mm-hmm go like you know like I'm like oh well they they notice that I, mm-hmm. I have that you know so mm-hmm. imagine like as a grown-up how it makes you feel like a kid it's gonna be mm-hmm. tenfold it really does improve your outlook for mm-hmm. all day long you know um a couple of weeks ago I was doing uh coping skills bingo with my l- younger kids and one of the things was um positive affirmations mm-hmm. and they were all like what is that and so I was trying to explain what an affirmation is and how we use them day to day. And it goes to that. Yeah, yeah You yeah. know, we don't think about that sometimes, but that is a powerful way to help build confidence, too. And so it I is. think that piggybacks on that a little bit. Sure. Like just some sticky notes that, you know, you are beautiful, you are worthy, you, you know, you're an awesome builder, whatever it is that that kiddo is good at build on those things, but then also build on the things that maybe they want to work on a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, work hard on your math today. Or yeah. you maybe Mr. This. Barber could leave yeah. Mrs. Barber a note about fractions because I've been trying to help a kiddo at school. <laughs> and, y'all, fractions are hard. Fractions are hard. Just, I'm sorry, all of my math teachers. <laughs> yeah. But I love you, but I do not do fractions yeah. well at all. <laughs> I went into fifth grade to um, – with Miss McCullough's class, fifth grade math class, and Mr. Powell was actually in there working with a math group. And mm-hmm. he was like, hey, come over here and help us out. And I was like, okay. Like, <laughs> I, I had self-confidence. <laughs> and it was shot down quickly. Because when I saw that it was fractions, I was I like, like oh, no. That's but where my self-esteem goes. I did practice, and I mm-hmm. went back later on in the week and worked with them. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh. I, I remember now. So yeah. fifth grade fractions is, a, it's, yeah. it's a, mm-hmm. and I love it when kids come to eat or if I'm going to eat with them or whatever, and they open up their lunch box and they have a little note from a parent. Oh gosh, there. I love those too. <laughs> That's sweet. I love that too. Sweet. And did you know you can put a note in bananas? Like you can um, use a toothpick or something sharp and like poke holes in the banana peel in the uh-uh. and so you can like write a word or you can draw a little picture. You could even do a heart and the hole turns brown and so then when they pull their banana out like just that part is brown and the rest of the peel is yellow and so they can see your it's little on note the banana on, on, on the, the banana peel. well so no on it. the peel no 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 sorry oh, I was on say, the peel, peel so you have the banana. oh my gosh Sorry, guys. Confusing. No. All right. Okay, so on the peel. On the peel. On the peel. Yeah. Oh, like you can so use sweet. a pen and write on the peel. Well, you could with like a sharpie, I guess. Yeah, because that. But will the ink go through the peel? I don't know. I don't think so. I think I saw that on Pinterest. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Pinterest for the win. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because I'm not. I, yeah. I don't know about sitting there poking. Yeah, that's a long that's time. That's a lot of holes. That's a long well, time. I guess it depends. If you just sit a little hard or something, yeah, I think it would be yeah, all right. Yeah, but yeah, yeah you yes. could take a pen. You could just do a little Sharpie because then the Sharpie wouldn't go through the mm-hmm. skin, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it would. That. Let's we would. That. Yeah, figure My it out. My kids eat school lunch, so. But they could put them on the bed. They could. Oh, yes. Service learning project. Okay, they sorry. Could. No, I think that's great. So, y'all, I, I think we all know this, but being a parent can be so powerful. And I think as parents, because I feel mm-hmm. like we can say that, we have the ability to either build up our kids or tear them down. And I know that parenting is hard, and there are days that it seems just very, very hard, and there's days that it's amazing and beautiful. But 
I want our parents to help us continue to create confidence in our kids. Mm -hmm. I know the three of us work hard at building self-esteem and building confidence with our students here. But these are some easy things that can be done at home that, you know, if we could just change our mindset a little bit and change the questions that we ask our kids daily, Mm -hmm. you know, that can help build confidence in these kids. And when they move on and leave us and go to the middle school and on to the high school, they can portray that confident student that we have helped build them into. Well, and I think... I think it's important to remember that's why we chose this topic because being a parent is very powerful in parents. You are doing a good job and I don't think you feel that enough and I don't know that you're told enough. So you are doing a great job. And if you find yourself in need of some help, you know, I love the website, Big Life Journal, and they have an article that's called 25 Things You Can Do Right Now to Build Your Child's Confidence. And they have other handouts, too, with just really quick and easy activities you can do with your kids if they're having a moment where they're struggling or um, if you want to encourage them. Another thing, too, is we're here. We're available for you. Mm -hmm. So if you do have a child that is struggling with low self-esteem or Mm -hmm. maybe had high self-esteem and now you feel like something's happened or something you know Mm -hmm. just changes whatever that may be and now they're struggling with that and you've tried all your tricks then reach out to us because we definitely would love to to help you and be a partner with you Mm -hmm. um, to try to build that confidence up Mm -hmm. and to support you in that as well thank you for listening to our coffee with the counselors podcast produced by Anderson school district three To contact your counselor or for suggestions on future topics, visit acsd3.org to contact our counselors directly.